been good. Just got back from Phoenix. How was that, Norma? It was nice. Yeah. Got to. Yeah, my husband is into baseball, so we went to watch some spring training. Fun. Some baseball games. Excuse you. Yeah. This is not your training. That's awesome. How was the weather? Was it like too hot, too cold? How was it? You know what? It was really nice. Tuesday yeah. was a little bit, what was it? Monday and Tuesday was really nice. Ya no más el Tuesday, like in the evening, got a little bit cold, but it was nice. It nice. was hot, actually. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, me and some of my friends are thinking of going out there. So um, I have to ask, like, is there anything that you like think that we absolutely have to do when we're out there? Um, you know what? I'm all about trying new restaurants the food yes. i just love i enjoy food <laughs> yeah and there's this restaurant it's a it's a breakfast uh restaurant and uh -huh. they have the uh they have red velvet waffles they okay. are amazing uh como se llama Híjole. it changed its name let me think about the name and i'll text it to you Okay, but you yes. really, I, yeah, you should try it. Nice. Okay, yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, so to catch you up, Norma, on what you missed, we were talking about, um, we were pretty much just talking about on whether everybody was doing their phone calls or not, right? We were talking about, did everybody do their phone calls? Um, I lost you guys. There you are. Um, did everyone do their phone calls to, you know, offer CMAs to your clients um, or just not your clients, your sphere of influence, friends and family to let them in on, you know, this amazing market right now. And um, really nobody had done their phone calls. And so I wanted to know what was holding everybody back. Like, why, why, why aren't we doing what we're supposed to do? Because I don't want to sit here and just teach and teach and teach and then like nothing gets done because if there's something else holding you guys back i'd rather focus on that and get you guys past that in order for everyone to take action and so um to, to really just sum up what you missed we uh we went over practicing um morning and nights listening to words of affirmation this is this is something that you can very easily do on youtube you can create a playlist um there's plenty of different videos that you can find with words of affirmation um and what it is is right before you go to sleep when you're in that um there's like different REM states that we have. And I don't know exactly which one it is. I don't know, I don't remember what, what it's called exactly, but right before you go to sleep, like as you're dozing off and then right when you wake up, those times in your, your mind is the most, um, that's when it absorbs the most information. So that's why it's important to listen to these videos. Like if you're, if you're dealing with, you know, not being confident, oh, skip that. I, I totally forgot to mention that you know, we, we came to the conclusion of, you know, a lot of us are just lacking self-confidence, confidence in just, you know, they, like just feeling confident with what we're saying. Um, so what, what we're trying to do is reprogram our mind to be more confident. If you go to sleep listening to these words of affirmations and you wake up listening to these words of affirmation, um, you know, while you're getting ready in the morning, this is a very powerful tool that really doesn't take a whole lot of effort on you all's part, um, but it's a game changer. So um, when you get a chance, go into YouTube, look up words of affirmation, create a playlist for yourself and try to make it a new habit to fall asleep listening to this. Um, and to wake up in the morning and listen to it first thing in the morning. The reason being, guys, is because that's when your mind absorbs the most information. So that's why it's also really important before you go to sleep and when, when you wake up in the morning that you guys are, are in a good state of mind, okay? So it's really important that you guys are not 
um, reading the news right before you go to bed or first thing in the morning. It's really important that you try to stay off social media first thing in the morning or right before you go to bed. It's really important if you have a partner um, before you guys go to bed that you try to you know, end on amicable terms and wake up on amicable terms. You don't want the first thing um, that comes out of your mouth or the first thing that goes into your mind to be negativity. So that's the reason why um, I, I requested that you guys check out the words of affirmation. So show of hands, who tried this within these past few days? Alvaro? Anai kind of, sorta? Anybody else? Lorena? Ethel? Awesome. Um, what was y'all's experience? Did anybody have an experience that they would like to share after trying this? Good, bad, indifferent. It doesn't have to be anything amazing, but just what was the experience? Alvaro, was it hard for you guys to do? Um, it's, it's, diff it's, it's different. It's something new. Mm -hmm. So it's a little, I, I don't know what to say. It's a little, well, it's different. <laughs> it's different. Did you have a hard time falling asleep? No, you know, actually, when we started <laughs> watching these videos, it, it kind, kind of makes you sleep. Like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, did yes. you, did you find it helpful and beneficial in any way? Well, at least in the sleeping way, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Good. And you really haven't done it for a whole lot of time. So we talked about this Monday. So assuming that you guys started on Monday night, so that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that's really only three nights that you guys have had an opportunity to try it. And I don't know if you guys did it every single night. And then in the morning, again, that's only three mornings that you've really had an opportunity to try it. Um, but I really just... I'm glad you guys tried it. Um, this is something that, you know, over time, hopefully you'll start to kind of get into the habit of it. And, and I just kind of want you to, to see that it's going to just help you shift your perspective. It's just going to help you build that self-confidence because what you guys have to understand is our subconscious, we have our conscience and then we have our subconscious. Our subconscious is so much more powerful than our conscience. Okay, so our conscience is when we make um, certain decisions when we're awake, uh, like we might, I don't know, pick out what color shirt we're going to wear. That's us using our conscience. Your subconscious has been programmed for years with a lot of your patterns. So for example, when you tie your shoes, do you think about tying your shoes? Not really, right? Because your subconscious has already programmed it in. It, it's already learned it and it's working for you. You don't think about that when you're tying your shoes, but your subconscious is working very hard for you already. Okay. Um, your subconscious works even when you're sleeping. So that's why it's important that we prime our mind at night and in the morning um, to just be at its ultimate peak. Can, can you mute yourself, please? Can you still let me mute you guys? There it is. Okay. Um, so for those of you guys that haven't tried it yet, please give this a shot. Um, this is just something that's going to help you go to bed on the right foot and then wake up on the right foot. Um, so we are going to jump into our training that we were supposed to do last Monday, and that is going to be our listing, uh, listing agreement. So we're going to go over the listing agreement. We're going to make sure you guys understand exactly how to fill this out. Um, but before we do, I want Anai to share a story with you guys. Um, <laughs> we jumped on a training yesterday. We jumped on a training yesterday. This training was given by one of the top producers in the entire United States. And this training was on um, listings. It was on listings. Uh, this was a training that I wanted to do for myself. Of course, Anais here with me. So if she has an opportunity to sit in, she always does. 
um and and it was on listings and just like you guys i'm constantly trying to learn i'm constantly trying to grow i'm trying to stay you know on top of my game i don't know everything i know that so there's other people that have other information to offer and so we went to this listing um training and i would like for anai to share our experience with us i i shy um well this training was Denise, you are muted, I think. My mic? Yeah. My Denise, bad. Okay. Um, okay, so it was a really good training. Um, I thought it was a little funny because literally everything that the guy was saying was what Denise had already told you guys. Um, kind of like about how to get listings about how to get listings uh, and even like Down. with our self-development type thing um he just said you know we need to be building our relationships we can't just call people and get down to business like we we have to build relationships and <laughs> Even when we go to the store, he told a very funny story um, that one of his best clients and referral person is somebody that he met peeing at a restaurant. Like, <laughs> you would never think that meeting somebody in the restroom at, at, at a restaurant or wherever is going to bring you business. But we just have to keep the, the mentality of be nice to everybody, reach out to everybody, you know. Talk to everybody. Talk to everyone, everyone. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if you're having a bad day, maybe they'll brighten your day up. Or if they're having a bad day, you'll brighten their day up. But just talk to everybody, everybody. Yeah. So thank you, Anai. That was really something that I wanted her to share with you guys because I didn't know, all I knew was that the training was gonna be on listings. Um, I knew who this person was. I knew that he, he held a lot of weight in the real estate community. I wanted to go and check it out. Um, and you guys, literally, he was telling all the agents to the, do the exact same thing that I told you guys to do he literally told them to do the exact same thing. Casi, casi, like, huh, yeah. exactly the same. Like we were sitting there looking at each other, like, really? He's teaching my class. Like they, it was, so I say this not to make me sound any type of way, but I say this because this is a man that charges $400 for his trainings. This is a man that can fill up an auditorium with thousands of people okay and he literally sat there and said guys reach out to your sphere of influence reach out to your past clients let them know what the market looks like use ford ask them how their family friends are um occupation recreation dream and then let them know what the market looks like let them know that hey i've never seen the market like this before and he, he kept saying, can you say that with integrity? Can you say that with integrity? Each one of you guys, I've never seen the market like this before. Can you say that with integrity? Yes, none of us. Miss Connie, you've been in real estate for how many years? Uh, more than 13. More than 13. And Lorena, how, how many years have you been in uh, real estate? Six. Six. Have you ladies ever seen the market like this before? No, I never. Haven't. Never. So when we reach out to a client, can you say with integrity, I've never seen the market like this before? With integrity, like with honesty. Yes, right? Yes. So one of the one of the hurdles that we were talking about last time was thank you, ladies, was feeling 
like it's because I don't want to come off as a salesperson. It's because I don't I don't want to come and and make it seem like I this is all I'm all I'm calling for. No, listen, guys, please understand you're bringing value to people. We've never seen the market like this before. Never, ever, ever. That's that's a valuable thing um, for sellers. And, and I'm going to use his words because this is this is from the training that we went to. Sellers are sitting on a gold mine and a lot of them don't know it. Right. But this is what Mr. Dusty was saying. <laughs> um, they're sitting on a gold mine and they don't know it. Don't you think they would ap appreciate knowing that? Are you going to force anybody to sell their house? No. No. If they don't want to sell it, they're not going to sell it but they would appreciate to have that information. Buyers, on average, the last six years, our average interest rate has been 6%. Our average interest rate for the last six years has been 6%. What are our interest rates be? Who, who got a, a buyer pre-qualified recently? Anybody have a buyer pre-qualified recently? Lorena, what was his interest rate, his or her interest rate at? 3.375. 3.375. That's a high interest rate right now. That's a high one. So for buyers, don't you think it's somewhat of value for them to know also, hey, interest rates have never been this low before. Now, what's so valuable about the interest rate? It's not just, oh, I'm going to get in and get pre-qualified at an interest rate that's low. Guys, remember, this is a fixed rate for 30 years. That means that even if our interest rates jump up next year or the next year or the year after that, they're going to get to you, they're going to get to keep whatever interest rate they agreed to right now. That's super duper valuable. People don't know these things. Like the average person doesn't know this stuff. You guys know this stuff. So stop getting in your head and overthinking it because you're the professional bringing this information to your clients, okay? So I really hope that helps. I really hope that you guys get to it um, and make these calls. Um, has anybody had any success with these calls? Since Monday, has anybody reached out to anybody and tried to give uh, a complimentary CMA or told a friend about, hey, this is what the market's looking like? I did it. You did it, Ethel? How did that go? Yeah, um, I, I don't know. I need to wait. They, are, they, they don't know what they want to do with their house. They are moving. And the thing is that uh, she... Her, her her mother lives here, well, in Juarez. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult for them to get rid of the house because now they are moving, but maybe they are going to come back. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing they are, they, are, they are thinking, yeah. Where are they moving? To, to Oklahoma. Okay, okay. Yeah, and, and, and we talked about that and I gave, I, I did the CMA, so I gave a range. I didn't, I didn't give her a number. Um, she, she needs to talk to, to her husband. And uh, she told me yesterday night that, that they talk and that he is not, she, he doesn't know. So I, I told her, I can go, he's moving in three weeks. So I told her, we can go, we can talk with him. We can see what he has in his mind, what he wants to do, and we can help him. Like giving him information, we can help him mm -hmm. um, making the decision. Right. And we talk about buying a house in Oklahoma. So what to do with this one? Uh, which are the rents here and in Oklahoma? If they buy there, if they can rent there, if they come back, if they can... Uh, buy something something newer here so we talked about the the big picture yeah big yeah. picture so i'm trying to to have a new listing appointment like a listing appointment not just a conversation in the next 
two or three weeks. Yeah. Good, good. So um, I'm guessing that they're thinking that they're only going to be there for a few years or something. Yeah, just two or yeah, two years, I think. He, yeah. So another thing that we got out of this listing is he was talking about, you know, a lot of times with our potential sellers, um, the seller's question is like, well, okay, yeah, it's a seller's market. I'm going to get rid of the house quick, but then where do I go afterwards? Right. And um, for somebody in a situation like that, Ethel, if they're planning on moving somewhere temporarily, it's a, man, it's a great opportunity for them to sell to cash out on their investment and to rent temporarily in another state. That would yeah. be like just kind of off the top of my head based off the little bit of, no, if I was in that situation, that's probably the move that I would make right now. Just rent temporarily um, for anybody that's thinking about selling. Thank you. Bless you. If they would be willing to rent temporarily, <laughs> if they're willing to rent temporarily, that's actually a really good move. Now, not well, yeah, they are not thinking about that. They are thinking on buying a new house there because the rents there, uh, it's a very little town, but the rents are higher than here. So okay. I, well, I said, I think it's better to sell here, to go with the money there, to buy your house. And he's, they are not going to have a, a loan, to take a loan, I think, uh, his parents are going to pay okay. for, are going to give like a loan, but it's not a loan for mm -hmm. them. Uh, so I, I told him maybe it's better to sell here because you will have more money than ever yeah. if you sell the house here and then buy there because it's cheaper there than here, but the rents are higher. So, and you can rent that, that house when you come back and you can buy something newer and nicer here. Yeah, and, and they have options, you know, like if, if they can buy out there, they can buy. But I guess the point that I'm trying to make is they're in a position where they're going to move anyways. Remind them that their house has never been worth as much it is, as it is right now. Okay. Oh, you muted yourself. Yeah, they know that. We talk about that and they saw a house that was uh it sold in the last month and it's very it's like in the same in the same area so they know how yeah, yeah how it is and how is the market and we talk about that um so that's a that's a great lead as well good job with that um norma you had a success story too that you kind of briefly told us about uh, yeah, well, we had a lead for a listing, um, there in New Mexico is the, he wants to sell his home. Mm -hmm. And the only bad thing is that we didn't find comparables to okay. do the CMA. We only found one, like in that area, obviously. Um, we found one that was sold three years ago. Okay. And so the only one that we could kind of compare it to was one that was pending. And it was kind of similar to the, the one that, that we um, were doing the CMA on. So unfortunately, I was driving to Phoenix that day. So my, my sister-in-law was the one that went to see, to look at the house, she took pictures. Uh, we were talking about it. Um, and I was kind of telling her about the, the listing, about the CMA, like how to come across, you know, the numbers and everything. And so we were discussing like what to tell the, the client, right? Because we didn't really have numbers. We didn't really have comparables. So we're like, oh, but what do we do? And so I told her, well, you know what? Let's just use the one that is pending right now. And um, just, and then I went and told her, you know, we learned in the class, you know, you give them a range of numbers. Don't, especially not having comparables. I mean, we couldn't just tell him, oh yeah, you're going to sell it at this price. 
uh, which we think they will, but then again, there's other factors that come into place with selling a home. Um, the most important one I think would be the appraisal. And yeah. so I just kind of told Erica, you know, this is what we learned. Um, we never want to tell them right away because we've done it before and we've got into a lot of messes mm -hmm. <laughs> doing that. Uh, telling them, oh yeah, we get so excited about, oh yes, we have a lead and we go and see the house and it's beautiful. And to us, it's like, we're going to sell it. And we say this number and then we go back and we're like, oh shoot, looking at the CMA. Oh my gosh, like it's not going to sell at that. Yeah. So we've learned our lesson by actually like doing it. And then again, reinforcing it with your class you know, so I was like, okay, remember, you know, don't tell them a number because you never Good. know. Good. Give them this range of numbers. Um, and then let's tell them, you know, there's not enough comparables, but we did find this. We believe you can sell it from this to this mm -hmm. much. Um, there's always, you know, the appraisal. And plus we explained to him, we were honest to him and, and, and told them, you know, we could always have a cash offer where they don't ask for an appraisal but that's just you know a game that we're gonna have to play you know and just um let him know that he kind of we kind of gave him gave him a range but we also kind of let him kind of lead a little bit so that we wouldn't be like telling him oh this is how much and then the appraiser would would come and then it's on us you know mm -hmm. it's like yeah so um, we're still working on that. Um, he hasn't gotten back to us. I know she called him uh, to ask him, but I think they're still thinking about it. So, okay, so I want to I wanna touch on your story a little bit because I think this is a really good learning opportunity for everybody um, because this is a fresh new listing appointment that Norma just went on and I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into your appointment, okay? Because there's a couple of things that we can touch on. So, um, I'm so glad that you've learned not to give a specific number. So I hope you guys heard that. She said they used to give a number. They used to give one number before they would go out to the house and then they would get to the house and they'd be like, crap, the house is not going to be worth that much. Probably because of the condition of the home, probably because of the lack of upgrades, probably because there, there was just something off. That's why it's important to give a range until you get into the house. OK, so you go from low to high and you let them know, depending on what the home uh, looks like, depending on the condition, any upgrades that you might have. Once I get in there and I can actually physically look at it, I can give you a better estimate. Until then, you're going to be within this range. OK, and and typically the client's not going to try to force you into a price. They're they're usually going to take that range. Um, especially when you in one sentence you just let them know like look this is the range once i get in there i can give you a better estimate they're they're usually good with that okay um and if they do try to kind of like get you to give them a better number just you just let them know look there's too many factors involved um and i don't like to over promise and under deliver so until i can see it i just wouldn't feel comfortable giving you a number okay they'll they'll usually usually respect that um now in this, in this case i have a question mm -hmm. in this case where we couldn't find comparables and we don't want to come mira es que this was my thing and i told erica i don't want him to doubt that we know what we're doing either mm -hmm. you know what i mean i was like because they're gonna some people i think that they just want to hear that number mm -hmm. you know what i mean like they they just want to hear this is how much you want to sell it for mm -hmm. and so i'm like did we do did in any of our words were was there something that made him hesitate and wait mm -hmm. you know what i mean i think yeah. i don't i don't get it quite right you know to use the words that they want to hear in order for them to know that i got you like i can do this i i yeah. can sell it for you yeah i still I feel like that, I that's why I want to dive into it because you didn't get the answer mm. that you wanted. You got the let me think yeah. about it. And that's not yeah. really the answer that any of us need right now. So I'm going to help you get an answer. OK, so 
so you did write, you did your CMA, you saw that there weren't a whole lot of comparables, okay? That's going to happen. There's not a whole lot of comparables. You work with what you have. You use the one comparable that you had. You use the pending. Now, the pending, I would recommend that you try calling the listing agent and see how much information they'll give you on it. If the listing agent doesn't give you information, try the buyer's agent. Just try to get as much information as possible. I'll be honest, as a listing agent, I don't like to give information if it's pending. I'm being completely honest. Um, I think if it's yeah. pending, it's just very... It's very up in the air and you could be an agent that could bring me a backup offer if this one doesn't work out and I don't want to give that information away. However, if I had a relationship with you, if I knew you, Norma, and me and you are, are compas and you told me the situation, I would tell you, I would tell you. That's mm -hmm. why it's important for you guys to have realtor relationships also, okay? And that's why it's important for you guys to work on your communication skills. We talked about reading the communication book because even if we're not compas, but you know how to approach me, you might be able to sway me to give you that information. Okay. Two, what type of personality is he? Is he social, analytical, social conscience, or a driver? Mm. I don't know. I mean, well, this is what happened because like I said, I didn't attend the meeting. It was my sister-in-law. Have you spoken we to him on the phone? We were just talking on the phone. When, have you not me. Him? She had. Okay. So that's an important piece of information. I, I just spoke to Erica. Okay. So that's an important piece you know of what information. She said, she said that she he didn't want to meet her like she went to the she she made the meeting she's like okay let's take a look at the house this and that and that he told uh he told her um you know what is it okay if you go on your own and then i'll i'll meet you later so she's like okay so the house was already the house is being rented right now mm -hmm. so she was able to go into the house and take a look at the inside and everything but she just thought she's like i thought it was weird because well usually they're present and he wasn't mm -hmm. that is so, weird that is weird I don't know. so so again our personalities um you need to have a really good understanding of that personality even if you're not the person talking to the client you're working with erica you should be able to or erica should be able to tell you hey girl we're meeting with this guy or we're doing his CMA or whatever the case may be, just so you know, he's yeah. a driver or he's analytical or he's social or he's social conscience. You should be able to get that information out of a phone call. You really don't need to meet with somebody in person to get with them, to, to get that information. In person, it's quicker and easier to get that information, but you should be able to get it over the phone. And it sounds like he might be a driver because he asked, yeah. he requested something out of the norm. Um, it, it almost kind of seems rude and, and a drivers can come off that way. Cause you're like, what the, like, why? Yeah. But again, you guys are losing control. You're losing okay. control. You control the appointment. You're the professional. Your time is money too. Yeah, sure, you got things to do, but my time is money also. I'll I'll do what you got to do for me, but don't make it so easy for him to pawn you off and let me get what I'm going to get and and you know, on my terms. Like, you know what, Mr. Ortega, that's fine. Uh if you can't be present, you know, I know your tenants are there. Um maybe we can meet up afterwards. Where, where can we meet after? Will you be available at 3 p.m. to go over the numbers after? That's, that's fine, you don't gotta be at the house, but I'm gonna meet with you in person to talk about this afterwards. I've done the CMA on my own. I went out to your property. I dealt with your tenants because you didn't wanna be there. Now let's sit down and talk about the numbers when we're done. So let's, let's set that appointment now. So you don't just send them the numbers over email or give it to them over phone call like that's fine but let's set up a good time to talk afterwards he might have not wanted to go because he has beef with the tenants you really don't know it, it might have had nothing to do with you he might just not like his tenants 
Okay. But that's an important piece of information. You have to understand his personality. You both do. Even if you're not working with, if you haven't spoke to him, that's super important. Um, now, once you have the personality, um, you did right. You got your CMA, you got the pending. Talk to the listing agent and buyer's agent on the pending deal to try to get as much information as possible. Excuse me. And then when you sit down with the seller, it's important for you to explain what the situation is. So you just let them know. You let them know, hey, do you understand how we get the anticipated value of a property? Uh, kinda, sorta, you guys look at other properties that have sold. Yes, so this is how we get the anticipated value. We have to look at homes that have sold within the last six months to a year maximum homes within your same neighborhood or area. So we, we really can't go further than a mile three maximum. Um, and, and even three is pushing it. I mean, that's really you just kind of fishing for something at that point. Same square footage, same years built. And so when we did this initial analysis for your home, Mr. Seller, there weren't a whole lot of comparable properties. There weren't a whole lot of properties like yours that have sold in the past. So giving you an anticipated sales value is going to be a little difficult. But here's the information that we did get. Based off the information that we did get, we're anticipating that your sales price, with the information that we did get and going out to view the property, we're anticipating that we can that your sales price will be somewhere within you might even have to give them a range again you might even have to say like we're probably looking somewhere with between 220 and 240 with that being said in today's market we never know how high of an offer we're gonna get because i can put up a property right now and get an i get i can get offers as high as $40,000 above asking price. It's possible in today's market. Until then, I would recommend we list at this price. You as the professional have to come up with the price. You have to come up with a price. But okay, then you, you let them then know. You just let them know like, hey, it could be a lot higher. We're, it, in today's market, it's very, very possible. Okay. So Denise, I'm so scared of the appraisal, right? <laughs> I don't want to say the, the number and then the appraisal comes at another number. I know that at that point, they can come up with a, with an arrangement, I guess, like they could like come up with a decision, right? The seller and the buyer as to where they drop the price or so like pero por ejemplo like what you're saying if there comes if if an offer comes like forty thousand dollars more because this is gonna be like a it's a small home it's gonna be more like um como se dice like um like a like a I, when you buy and you make it um like not not to live in it but to like rent it or an invest an investment like okay. it's more gonna be like an investment type of deal so it's gonna be like really cheap but if they come and do oh no but forty thousand over okay and then of course you get the highest the highest so you explain that also you just offer right you, so the biggest what thing happens you, with the appraisal you set the expectation up front you tell him you give all the information up front so you you set the expectation up front so you say now with that being said keep in mind that if you get a buyer that's financing there will be an appraisal i'm not an appraiser okay I use, I use a very similar method of evaluation, but I'm not an appraiser. So if we get a buyer that's financing, now we have to, now we have to worry about the appraisal. Now the appraiser is going to get the last word on how much this property is worth. So even if we get a, an offer $40,000 over asking, if that buyer is getting financed and the appraisal comes in $20,000, um, we're going to have to reduce the price and adjust adjust the price 
because unless that buyer has an additional $40,000 to pay out of pocket and they want to do that, which doesn't typically happen, we, we can't bank on that. Now, also, it's very okay. important when you have an, a deal like this that you don't have a whole lot of information, you need more information on how much did he buy that property for? How long ago did he buy it? How much does he want to net on it? So when you have all of that information, it's a lot easier for you to say, well, okay, maybe I'm not 100% sure on the price, but based off the last comparable, I know we can at least get 220. And I know that this man bought this house 15 years ago at $90,000. You think he'll be happy? He'll be happy. You know what I mean? Like then now you you remember you guys have to know more about that property than even the the seller knows so the more you know the better like now you're in a position of okay if this was an investment that i made would this make sense hell yeah that would make sense like if he's not happy with this number he's not going to be happy with any number it's not about me and the price anymore it's just he he's not ready to sell for whatever reason um, so make sure you get all of that information up front and then also asking how much are you trying to net? What's the payoff amount? How much do you owe on it? Or is it free and clear? Getting all of that information is going to help you better understand when I come to him with this price, what's his response going to be? Because what are we concerned about? We're just concerned about their response, right? Mm. We know, we know like, all right this is a range, but I, what are they going to think about the price? Well, don't overthink yeah. it. D get as much information as you can come prepared and then let them figure it out. And you, you're here for the facts. Norma's here to give information and to give you facts. She's not here to tell you what you want to hear. She's here to tell you what you need to hear. You asked me to come here as a professional to provide you with information. I'm here to give you the information. Whether you like that number or not, Mr. Seller, this is what your property is worth. And I'm telling you right now, your house has never been worth than what it is right now. If you're not happy with that price, you're never going to be. Okay. okay. Good job, Norma. I'm so proud of you. I'm, I'm, I appreciate you sharing the story because I think this is a really good learning opportunity for everybody. Um, and I hope you guys are, you know, taking notes and getting something out of this. Also, there's always something to learn, even though we're going to listing appointments, there's always things that come up. Um, the, the uncertainty of, well, what do I do? Or what do I say? You know, you're on the right track, Norma, you have all the right questions. Um, just implement implement everything that you're learning and and you clearly are so just keep up the good work i'm very proud of you pat yourself on the back <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so um Thank you. how much time do we have man i'm a talker you guys okay um let's jump into i want to share this affirmation with you this, uh, this, this affirmation that we have for the day, I'm not going to go into the PowerPoint. I just want you guys to, to see this affirmation. I have the power to create all the success and prosperity I desire. I have the power to create all the success and prosperity I desire. Okay. I want you guys to take yourself off of mute for a second. We are going to say our affirmation out loud. We're going to speak it into the world into the universe and then we are going to learn about how to fill out a listing agreement okay on the count of three nice and loud mean it one two three i have the power okay i know this seems silly to a lot of you guys trust me your words of affirmations are game changers, okay? You don't have to do this out loud with me in the group. It, you know, what you, you really just have to be more mindful about everything that's going in your mind, um, everything that we consume, right? Whenever, whenever we talk about 
going on a diet or getting healthier. We talk about the food that we're consuming. We talk about drinking more water. Feed your brain too, guys. Okay. Feed your brain positivity, words of affirmation, positive thoughts. Just keep feeding your mind with positivity. Okay. All right. So um, you can still see my screen. Okay. All right. So, oh, that's not the right contract, is it? Nope. I'm sorry. I thought I pulled up a listing agreement and that is not one. Okay, I'm going to show you guys an example of a listing agreement. That's it. I'm sorry, guys. I thought I had one pulled up, but it was the wrong one. Yes. Look at me thinking I was ready and I'm not at all. Fail. 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 <laughs> Look, you guys, how cheap my cat is. She sucks on her thumb. <laughs> she sucks on her thumb and she wants to be at all the trainings. <laughs> it's my baby. Is that a cat or a dog? It's a cat. <laughs> but she has this weird habit of, of sucking on her thumb. Uh, Ethel or Anai, one of you guys help me out, please. I cannot find a listing agreement for the life of me. I can send you one. Please. To you. Okay. Let me look at it. I thought I had it pulled up, but it was the wrong contract. Um, she has this crazy habit of sucking on her paw whenever she's feeling chiple. And when I was little, I used to suck on my thumb probably until I was like seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. I think I I was pretty old when I stopped. Yeah. <laughs> so when I got my kitty and she did that I was like, oh, "She's my baby." <laughs> Do you want me to send you the la mirada or Yeah, that works. Yeah? Just okay. yes, yes, please. So okay. she's, she's the people queen of the house. <laughs> I had to share that with you guys. All right, so just give me a second so I can pull up this listing agreement. And so it's really important for you guys to um, first read your contracts, guys. Um, I've heard like, oh, well, I don't know how to explain the contract. Just read them. Read them from start to finish. Um, yeah, they're boring. They're contracts. Nobody said they were going to be fun. But if you already know that you're going to be working with a lot of buyers and that you keep having buyers consultations, well, read your buyer's representation agreement. Make sure that you understand what it says so that when you explain it to people, um, you, you know what to say. So same thing with the listing agreement. I'm going to review it with you guys the same way that I review it with my clients. Okay. You, so, you have it in your inbox. Thank you. I think. You know what? I think that's why I'm in the wrong one. Um, so I'm going to review it with you guys the same way that I review, review it with my clients. Um, I'm not going to go line by line with you guys because it's already 1150. I don't want to keep you guys all day. Thank you so much, Ethel. Um, but I'm just going to do a quick review of this is how I explain it to my clients. The just the average client and the reason that I feel so comfortable doing it is because I understand my contract. Okay. Now, if they ask questions on it, I'll go deeper into it, but I don't, I don't want to go line by line every single time I do a listing, uh, every time I have a listing agreement filled out. So I'm just going to go and, and this is exactly what I say. So take notes. Um, I, I start by saying, all right, we're going to go ahead and uh, fill out the listing agreement now or sign the listing agreement now. 
This is an agreement. This is the agreement between me and you to work together. I'm just gonna go over the meat and potatoes of it. If at any point you don't understand or you want me to stop or slow down or dive deeper into something, let me know. I'm just gonna kind of go over what's the important parts of it, okay? So first page, we have all of your information. Please review it. Make sure all the information on here is correct. And then you have all of my broker's information. So you have all of the contact, my broker's contact information as well. This is all your property information. This is the legal address. So basically your home address is 368 La Mirada. The legal address never changes. So if at some point the city decides to change the name of your street, your legal address will never change. Now on here, we're gonna go over what exactly is staying on the property. We have our improvements and we have our accessories. Everything that's listed in these two paragraphs stays Yes, can you guys not see it? Oh, hang on. Sorry. Tori. Um, let me get back in here. I'm kind of lost now. I don't know. I think I need help with this one. I don't know where my big, oh, up here maybe, new chair. There it is. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Move this. All right, everyone can see it. Awesome, possum. All right, so you guys are going to be my sellers. I'm going to be the listing agent, okay? All right, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I'm going to go ahead and review the listing agreement with you. This is the agreement for us to work together. I'm going to go over just the meat and potatoes of it all. If at any point you don't understand what I'm saying, if I'm going too fast, or if you want me to dive deeper into it, please stop me and let me know and we can do that. Okay. Line number one, this is all of your information. Please review it and make sure all of that's correct. Then I give them a second to review it and make sure all of it's correct. Everything looks good. Awesome, let's move forward. Second line, this is all of my broker's information and all of their contact information. Remember, not only do I represent you, but my brokerage rep represents you. If at any point anything were to happen to me, um, if I'm out of reach, cause I'm you know, unable to answer for whatever reason, you have their contact information. Also, you have all their information on the information about brokerage services, which is an another document that we're gonna include in this packet, okay? This is the property information. This is the legal description of the property. Um, this address will never ever change. Your street ad address might change at some point if the city decides to change it, but the legal address will never change. Now, everything listed on these two paragraphs right here will be staying with the property unless you let me know now. Okay, so everything that you see on here, screens, shutters, awnings, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, mirrors, blinds, window shades, draperies, etc. Please review this. If there's anything on here that you plan on keeping, I need to know because I need to include it on number on on line number D under exclusions, baby. You've got to chill. Um so on this one, we've already reviewed um, break from my role play. Um, I've already walked through the house. If there's anything that I'm seeing um, that I think they might want to keep, I actually want to point this out to them. So um, for example, TV mounts, that was one that I didn't realize when I first started stayed with the house. So TV mounts stay with the house. I always ask like, you know, I see that you have a bunch of mounted TVs. Are you okay with leaving those TV mounts? they're typically going to say yes. Um, if, if they want to keep anything that's listed in here, I always recommend that they remove it before we show the property. Baby, you need to chill. Um, I always recommend that they remove it before we even show the property. That way there's no confusion with the buyers. Okay. 
Line E, is this an HOA? Yes or no? Okay, that's what we're checking off there. Listing price. This is the price that we're agreeing to list the property at. You're going to fill that in. The term of the agreement. Personally, I do four month terms. I let them know that a lot of agents will do six month terms. I don't I don't think it's necessary to do a six month term, especially in this market. Um, my goal is to sell your property and to sell it quickly. Um, I don't see a need to have it listed for an entire six months. So we fill that in. Broker's compensation. So broker's compensation is 6%. Now of that 6%, that gets split up into three, three for, the, to, for the listing side. So 3% goes to my company. From there, I get a commission. And then the additional 3% goes to whoever finds you a buyer, a buyer's commission or buyer's company. And then from there, their, agents gets a, their agent gets a, a split. Now, if this is a deal that I have with my clients, you guys are more than welcome to offer this to your clients. I recommend it. Now, if a buyer is unrepresented and a listing and I become an intermediary, I will give you a discount of one point. So now instead of paying 6%, you'll pay 5%. Okay. Now, none of this is earned and payable until the property sells. Okay. That's what this is. Other compensation. Um, uh i kind of just skip over that if i'm being completely honest uh number three so the next one that i go over is this one so usually right here for whatever reason we don't have it on this one. Oh, i know why we don't have it on this one um so typically on this line uh i made an exception with this listing on this line i usually have a 499 early early termination fee so on here it usually just says 499 early termination um, and I do explain that to, the, to them. I say, if at any point you decide to terminate this listing early, there is a $4.99 early termination free, fee. Now, the protection period basically says that if this contract were to terminate um, after, the, after this agreement terminates, I have, um, I have what? What is it? A few days. Um, I don't even explain that. What I say is, um, after this agreement terminates for 60 days, if there's any buyer that I brought you during the time of the agreement that and they decide to buy for those 60 days after this contract terminates, I'm still entitled to compensation from them. Okay. Listing services. Um, so this basically says that I will file your listing within five days of within five days of signing this agreement, I'll file it on the multiple listing service. The multiple listing service is the system that realtors use to share information. Now, if you're going to need more than five days, guys, oh, she's like, she's very extra right now. She really wants to be with me. Let me open the door for her. She's just being super extra. Okay, um, so if you guys need more than five days, you can always in under special provisions, and I'll show you where here in a second, you can all you can always change the number of days because five days is actually really quick, right? Um, typically, the way that I work it is I get this listing agreement signed as quickly as possible, like at the listing pre at the listing appointment. But then my sellers might need a week or sometimes even two weeks to prepare the house. And then I have to get the stager in there. I have to get the photographer in there and then it could go in the MLS. So typically, personally, I'm looking at about a two week window to prepare the property to go up on the MLS. So I usually shoot for one week of giving them for preparation. Um, and it's important that you guys push your clients to have everything done by a certain time. So I usually give them like a weekend. So if I met with them on Wednesday, I want them to be done by Sunday. If I, if I met with them on Monday, I want them to be done by Sunday. Like I give them a weekend. Um, you want to push them to get it done as quickly as possible. If they're not going to be able to do it in that time frame, they'll tell you. But if you don't give them a deadline, they're going to take forever to get it done. 
So you have to give them that timeline. Most people only need one week to declutter, to clean, and to do paint touch-ups because most people get it done in one weekend. That's really all they need, okay? Um, so a lot of times what I'll do, instead of checking off the five day under special provisions, I'll give myself 14 days to put it up on the MLS, okay? Because remember, if we ever get audited, you guys need to make sure that you're doing everything by the book and this is basically saying from the time that you signed this to the time that it went on the MLS, no more than five days. So if you need more time, give yourself more time. Okay. Um, the next one, this basically reviews um, what I'm going to do with your listing. It gives, um, it gives me authorization to put your information on the, actually, no, that's not the internet one. This one gives me authorization to access the property um, at reasonable times. It gives me authorization to share um, information with certain, certain people, inspectors, appraisers, um, duplicate keys to facilitate the property conveniently. Um, this right here is gonna give me authorization to put a lockbox on the property. Okay, um, at this point, this is a good time for me to usually ask for the keys. So do you guys have a copy of the keys that I can take with me right now? Okay, do they or don't they? Usually they don't. So I say, okay, that's fine. Um, can you go ahead and get that done by the time that I come back with the stager, please? Um, because usually, so right now I'm at the listing appointment. Right now I'm at the listing appointment and I'm getting the listing agreement signed. They need time to prepare the house. I'm giving them homework. Right now we are giving them homework, okay? They have a lot of stuff to do and you need to make it clear what they need to get done. You need to clean, you need a declutter. Oh, also I need a copy of the key. So if you don't have one right now, that's okay, but get one by next week, please. I'm gonna put a lockbox on the property. Are you okay with me putting it on the front door or would you prefer for me to put it on the side gate? On the side gate, please. Okay, perfect. I have my handy dandy notebook, so I'm taking notes so I don't forget this stuff, okay? Um, liability and indification. I always go over this with my clients. Please make sure you guys go over it with your clients, okay? We are not, li uh, we are not liable to any any loss or anything that might happen in the property. So yes, there are gonna be, uh, there's gonna be a lot of people accessing your property, but our lock boxes are really cool. What they are is they're actually managed by our ID card that has a chip on it. Only realtors are going to be able to access your property. Um, inspectors and appraisers also at that point when they, you know, when they come, but realtors are only going to be able to access your property. They actually have to insert their ID that has a chip on it. So we can see who's going and coming at what time. So it's pretty secure. However, in order for you to be best protected, please make sure that you hide any of your valuables. Don't leave anything out that's valuable. Um, like ladies, jewelry, put it in a drawer. Um, guns, if you have guns, please make sure that they're put away in a lock safe. Um, anything else that might be valuable, iPods, phones, anything like that. Um, just before we have a showing, make sure that it's put away somewhere and not super easily accessible. Um, also, if anybody were to come into the house, accidentally trip and fall and hurt themselves, we are not liable for that, okay? Um, now, cooperation of other brokers, like I mentioned before on the commission, what we're going to do is we're going to do 3% for the sell side, 3% for the buy side, and that's basically telling you that right here. Now, on the plus side, if we have an agent that is not part of the association, a non-MLS broker, we can actually reduce their, their commission down to 1%. I'll be honest with you, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that doesn't happen very often, but there is a chance that it happens. And if it happens, your, your commission will be discounted as well. Okay. Intermediary. Now I'm going to explain this to my clients also. This is very important to explain. Why? Because I told them that if I have a buyer that's unrepresented, I will give them a discount at 1% if I become the intermediary. However, what does the intermediary mean to them? The intermediary means that I actually 
stop representing them completely, right? I can't give them advice anymore. My, my representation shifts, okay? So, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm gonna give you all the information that you need to know up front. I'm going to advise you up front. Now, if I bring a buyer that's unrepresented, I can't advise you on offers and counter offers anymore. I can't tell you, oh yeah, go higher or go lower. You're gonna have to make those decisions. So pay attention, because I'm gonna give you all the information up front. At that point, if I bring a buyer and you're getting that discount, that means that I'm working with you and I'm working with them. And in order to be fair, I can't, I can't tell you what to, what to accept and not accept and offer and not offer. So I'm gonna give you all the information up front. If you don't want me to do that, I don't have to do that. I can assign that client over to somebody else, but the commission will go back up to 3%. Okay, fair? All right. Um, now, all of your information is confidential, not only during um, the time that we're working together, but forever and after all, uh, forever and after, after this. Um, these are the types of buyers that we are going to entertain offers on. We'll entertain offers on conventional, VA, FHA, and cash. Um, if your seller is willing to entertain any type of owner financing, you're going to want to check that off. But typically, these are the four that we're looking at. Okay. Um, seller representation. Here is a list of all of my duties to you. Or, sorry, 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 sorry. These are a list of all of your duties to me as a seller. Um, is there, are there any liens on the property that you know of besides the mortgage? No, nothing else? Okay, perfect. Um, mm -hmm. And you're current on everything? Yes, okay, perfect. Um, the name of any employer relocation company, um, this doesn't typically apply to us, so that's not a NA. Now, seller's additional promises. This is your agreement to me. And it basically says that you're going to cooperate um, with me, that we're working together. So this is a team effort in, in, in selling your property. So you're going to allow us access into the property. You're going to allow us to market the property. Um, you're going to assist us by, by selling. Um, do not, please do not negotiate with any buyers. So you're going to have friends and families that might, friends and family that might approach you, neighbors that might approach you about the sale of your home. Don't negotiate with them. Just don't talk to them. Just give them my information and let me do that for you. Okay. I'm professionally trained to negotiate on your behalf. That's probably the biggest thing that I want you to do. Okay. Um, limitation of liability. Again, we're going to go into the liability. Uh, broker is not responsible or liable in any manner for personal injury to any person and for any loss or damage. So we kind of already went over that. Um, seller agrees to protect and defend and identify a cost seller's negligence. Um, I will say this much for our sellers. Um, when I go over this, I also like to tell them about the seller's protection that we offer. So typically, just like I offer my buyers a home warranty, did you guys know that there's a seller's home warranty that you can sign up for? So with Old Republic, for example, that's that's my home warranty, my preferred home warranty company. I'm pretty sure the other warranty companies have one also. So you might wanna look into that. Um, but what we do is, so we're going into liability and we're basically saying, hey, we're not liable for anything, right? But I'm still gonna provide you with some extra protection, okay? What I am gonna provide you with is with a home warranty, seller's home warranty. So I don't want you to spend any more money on this property than you have to. Our goal is to sell this property and make as much money off of it as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you a seller's home warranty. What that is, is it's a protection package um, offered through a home warranty company, and it basically covers some of your major appliances. So during the time that your property is listed, if any of your major appliances were to go out that are covered by the home warranty, all you'll have to pay is a $100 service fee, more or less. They'll come out, they'll check it out. They'll either fix it or replace it for free. And at that time, I'm going to give them the home warranty package so that they can review it. I'm not going to review it with them. It's on there. I've circled it and I just give it to them. Okay, because we're talking about liability and like, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not liable for this, but we want to offset it with something. So that's a good time to talk about that. Okay, special provisions. This is where I said, if you need more time, get more time and plug it into your special provisions. Okay, 
Default med mediation and attorney's fees. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you're gonna see this on a number of our contracts. This basically says is if at any point um, there is some type of dispute either between yourself and the buyer, for example, we do not like to rush into trying to sue people and take them to court. We're gonna go into mediation, okay? And what that means is we'll basically bring um, the broker of the other company, we'll get my broker involved, and we're gonna try to resolve this um, within our own space. Why? This is gonna save everybody a lot of time, effort, energy, and money, okay? I've gone through these mediations before, it's very simple. We can usually get through them. But in the case that we cannot resolve it in house, um, this, you, you guys are going to be liable for your own attorney's fees. And then whoever loses the case may be liable for, um, for paying other attorney's fees, the other parties' attorney's fees also. You're going to keep seeing this on other contracts. So I tell them that. That way I don't have to repeat this next time. Okay. <laughs> um because that's also on the one to four contract so anything that i'm going to see over again i let them know like hey you're going to see this on another contract that way next time i'm like remember this we already went over it next um addenda and other documents this is everything that's going to be included in your packet so pay attention information about brokerage services seller disclosure wire fraud authorization to furnish till a respa general information and notice to buyers and sellers this is everything that should be included in your seller's packet these documents we're going to review with the client also i don't think this packet oh yeah it does okay never mind we're going to go over it um so we'll go over all of that so i pretty much just tell them we'll go over these here in a second um now this is the entire agreement um, everything that's in this agreement is the entire agreement. There's nothing more, nothing less. This is a binding agreement. Um, now, additional notices, these are all very important. These are laws that we have to abide by as realtors. Um, for example, we have the, um, you can kind of, I usually just tell them, you can review all of these. These are all just laws that we have to abide by um, as realtors and a, a, a bit more additional information um last but not least if you i am not a i am not an attorney if you want to hire an attorney you are more than welcome to do so okay and then sign here sign here sign here any questions no nope. okay let me take a pause real quick i don't usually start with this document i usually start with the easy ones so i usually actually start with information about brokerage services okay this is an easy one. So this is what I usually start with. And then that agreement is the last one. Why? Because you kind of want to ease them into it. Okay. The, the listing agreement is the scariest one. You kind of want to ease them into it. So if we go over all the notices first, it's just info, just info, just info. And then you get to the agreement. They've already gotten used to signing psychologically. It's just a little less stressful for them. Anytime anybody signs something that's legally binding, it's a stressful experience. So we wanna kind of ease them into it. So information about brokerage services, this basically gives you the difference between a sales agent and a broker. Um, just so you're aware, not only do I represent you, but my broker represents you. So you're gonna have all of my brokerage information here. You're gonna have my broker's information and my supervisor's information. If at any point you cannot reach me, if I were to get injured and be in the hospital, you still have representation. Please make sure that you keep all of this information. General information and notice to buyers, is literally what it says. It's general informa information and notice to sellers and buyers. This, you can kind of think of it as like a giant glossary. A lot of these terms you're gonna find on a lot of the contracts that we go over from now until the time that we close. If there's anything on here, if there's any words that stand out to you that you don't understand, please review it. It's gonna go over some environmental concerns. It's gonna go over flood hazards, historical information, inspections, repairs, walks, walkthroughs. Um, it explains what the multiple listing service is, which is basically the database that we use to share information um property insurance i just kind of like run through this because it is just general information and notice to buyers 
Um, there's a couple of them that I like to kind of review. Uh, so for example, I can't speak on criminal activity or sex offenders. However, there is a website here provided to you for when we're looking for your, for your next purchase. You can jump on that website and it'll give you the information that you're looking for, okay? Um, a lot of this information is going to come up on other contracts, so you do want to check it out. That way, when it comes up on the documents that you're signing to um, agree to the sale, you're already familiar with it. Uh, now, wire fraud, we're going to go over this one a couple of times. Um, I'll actually skip it for now because I'm going to go over it with them when I go over the wire fraud. Tila Respa, this basically gives me authorization to share your information with other parties involved in the transaction. So for example, our title, uh, lender, escrow agent, et cetera. And then, so that's the end of it. I'm missing my wire fraud. So when I get to my wire fraud, I would go over, I would say, um, I tell all of my clients the story that I tell you guys. Every single one of my clients, I tell them that. I want them to really understand the severity of wire fraud. Um, somebody posted on WhatsApp recently that it happened to them, right? And, and I just tell everybody, and I think it's important for you guys to tell everybody because this is how people lose a lot of money. A lot of people are coming in with big down payments right now. We're Matter of fact, we're advising them to come in with big down payments, okay? So make sure you're advising them on how to protect that money, please. Um, I basically tell them, look, wire fraud right now is very real. Um, the biggest thing that you need to know is if at any point you're about to wire money, make sure that you speak to me directly on the phone or the title company directly on the phone. These hackers are very, um, they're getting really good at what they do. And um, I've heard stories of an agent's client where they made an email that looked like their agent's email asking for money and the money got sent there. So we just, we don't want you sending the money to the wrong place. Just make sure before you wire anything at all, you speak to me directly. All right, any questions? It's a lot of talking. It's a lot of documents. So you guys have to get really comfortable with it. You have to get really comfortable with it. You have to understand it because it's a lot of information. Um, and I was kind of stopping and giving you guys a little bit of extra here and there. I try to run through it as quickly as possible with my clients. I try to just give them again, the meat and potatoes, what's really important. It's also important that you guys understand your client. Now, if you're going through, this is another reason that I like to start with, with these guys right here. So if I'm going through my information about brokerage services, have you guys ever had a client where I start explaining and they're like, ah, just pásamelo, pásamelo, yo lo firmo, pásamelo, pas yo lo firmo. <laughs> Sometimes they don't want you to explain it. You need to catch that right away. If they don't want you to explain it, they don't want you to explain it. Just say, okay, do you, are you okay with just signing it? You're okay with me not explaining it? If that's what they want, that's what they want, okay? Because, because for a lot of people, it's actually annoying for you to explain it to them, okay? They, they trust you. They're like, yes, I'm gonna sign whatever you want me to sign. Just give it to me. I, I wanna go get my hair done now. You know, like it is what it is. So that's why another reason I like to start with these guys, these are information we're going over it. If they're like rushing you to pass it to them, you can even say like, here you go. Do you want me to just pass you the packet? You can review it. If you have any questions, let me know. That's your personality type. Sometimes you don't have to. Sometimes the client's going to want to read everything. In those situations, sometimes I just pass it to them and let them read it because sometimes they don't want me to explain it. They actually just want to read it themselves. Um, so you kind of have to gauge what it is that your client wants, how much information they need or want, and then allow them to, to move forward with that. But you still have to understand it to a certain degree. Okay, Fanny? Question. What do you think that oh, is much better uh, the time you uh, present the, the listing agreement? Um, explain everything before they sign or uh, every page you explain, uh, you ask them uh, to sign each page, uh, page. Oh, everything as I go through it. 
So I'll do one page and I usually try to pick like the one major item that's on that page. You see how I, I skipped a lot of information. Um, I usually wanna go over like the stuff that we filled in. So I'll do one page and as I'm doing it, okay, here you go, sign on the bottom. Here you go, sign on the bottom. Here you go, sign on the bottom. This is what it is, sign on the bottom. And we go, that's, we, we go around in a little circle getting the signatures. Okay, because a lot of times if you give them the whole packet, it, se les va pasar una pagina, you're gonna miss an initial. It's kind of better if you're explaining page by page, you'll make sure that you get everything. Um, and then, yeah, uh, it's really important also, you guys get everything signed in the correct place. I recommend that before you guys go out there, um, you have one of these printed. Remember, we want to assume the sale. We wanna assume that we, when we go out there, we're gonna get the listing. So assume the sale, come ready with your packet, print it out. Um, and then you might even want to highlight the areas where they're gonna have to sign an initial. This will keep you better prepared because as you're explaining that, that's a lot of information. And it's a lot more information if you have to figure out where they have to sign an initial. So if it's set up easily for them where it's highlighted and it's ready to go, um, it just makes the entire process easier and smoother. Um, the one thing that you'll probably want to leave empty is the listing price, right? We don't want to walk in with a premeditated listing price, especially after we told them that we have to see the property to have a better estimate. So don't, don't have that pre-filled in. Um, now, if you are filling that in with them and everything's typed out and the only thing that's not typed out is our listing price, make sure that they initial next to it. Okay. Um, any questions, guys? No questions. Let me run through, make sure I'm seeing everybody. Questions, questions? Nope. Okay. I know this was a long one, but we really did have to go through this listing agreement. Um, that's all I have for you guys today. I'm really proud of you guys for making an effort to use your words of affirmation, just, you know, trying out new things. I know it sounds silly, but I appreciate the effort. <laughs> um, Alvaro? Yes, real quick, just... Um... Ese que dice text conversations with sellers en, en el checklist. Es, es, en, es en el checklist cuando subes a la compañía el contrato. En Skyslow. En Skyslow. This. It's not on here? No, Which not, one, Alvaro? I'm sorry, not, not on that contract. But when you, when you upload your contract on, on Skyslow. Yeah. It's what uh, Edgar is asking for that we have to upload all the conversations with uh, clients. Oh, that's new to me. Uh huh. So we don't know how what what to upload or how to upload. Take I don't know what to do. <laughs> but what? What? Because I I didn't hear that. Upload where and which conversation? Not papers. If you had uh, any conversation uh, by WhatsApp or text, you have to upload it. That's new information to me. So I'm not going to speak on it. Let me get more information for you guys and then I'll, I'll give you an answer. That's very new to me. Probably because I have an awesome transaction coordinator, so I don't do the uploading. <laughs> so let me figure that out, okay? You can, uh, Alvaro, you can upload, uh, you can save uh, WhatsApp conversations uh, to a PDF, but I don't know how to do it uh, by when you have text. But which is the purpose of that? I, I don't understand because everything is on writing. Every is in the paper. So if you have the paper signed, why you need to upload conversations? It's because they have uh, had uh, some problems, uh, demands about uh, conversations uh, that some agents had uh, by text and agreeing something. And it's why Edgar is asking for this, this file. 
but I think, so, sorry, but I think that's something that if you are arranging or negotiating something with a client, you need to write it. You need to write it in a paper and then upload it as a document, as an amendment on the listing, an amendment on the buyer's rep. You can do that. You have the amendments on, the, on all the documents. So, because, well, I don't know. We need to talk with Edgar because- Yeah, I think, I think we need to get clarity, Ethel, before we speak on it. Um, but yeah. it is very important that whatever you guys are agreeing to is going on an amendment or it is going on one of these um, contracts. Um, so if at any point you make a different deal with a client, like sometimes uh, my clients will say, well, what if I bring you the buyer? Honestly, I don't typically give a discount if they bring me the buyer, if I'm being completely honest, um, because that could mean that they literally just shared my Facebook post and one of their coworkers from 10 years ago happened to run across it. Like it's, it's really difficult for me to just say like, yes, if you bring the, like just, just sharing the content that I'm putting out doesn't necessarily mean that you brought the buyer. You know what I mean? Um, for me, it's more so, well, if you bring the buyer and they're unrepresented and I be can become the intermediary, then it makes sense for me to drop the price. Um, but just understand that I've, I've done all the initial marketing. They usually don't give me too much of a, of a hassle unless, unless when I go to the listing agreement, they already have somebody in mind. They're like, hey, this person right here, I already have in mind, I'll actually put their name down. I'll say, okay, if that person decides to buy, I'm going to reach out to them first and they don't have an agent. Um, let me, let me write it down here just to show them like, Hey, I'm trying, you know? Um, but typically I don't agree to that. Uh, obviously I'll, I'll do a case by case. Um, but yeah, that's my take on that. All right, guys, I hope you had, um, I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope you appreciated the training. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for being here. I appreciate each and every one of your willingness to learn and grow and be open to all the information that I'm sharing with you. And I hope that you guys have a great weekend. It's Thursday. So get on top of doing your searches for who you're going to show properties to over the weekend. Um, if you haven't already done your, your phone calls to offer free CMAs, today's a good day. Try to set up some listing appointments over the weekend. Also listing appointments are really good to do over the weekend also. So you guys can make some calls today. Um, if you don't do it today, tomorrow's Friday, nobody wants to talk to salespeople on Friday. So today's your day guys get moving. You have the whole rest of the day. Um, and then Saturday, Sunday, make sure you guys are being safe, please. Please make sure you guys are wearing your mask. Make sure you guys are hand sanitizing. Um, also, I've been hearing that there are a lot of families that are bringing a lot of people into the houses and this is making sellers uneasy. Guys, COVID-19 still exists. It's, it's still around. Um, so if you're showing homes to your buyers, make it a point to let them know, hey, we're trying to be as safe as possible. Please make sure that you wear your masks and we're only allowing the buyers to come in. We don't want the whole family there, especially the kids, guys. We don't want everybody there. So please make arrangements to not have the children there. If they're serious about buying, they'll make it happen. So we can't have Theo and Tia and grandma and uncle and like, we can't have everybody there. So that's your job as a buyer's agent to let your clients know, okay? And it'll make your life easier. You don't want all those people there. It will. All right, guys, I love you. Have a beautiful, beautiful Thursday and I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Denise. You're welcome. Bye-bye.